Hi everybody, welcome to this introduction to PHP Final Project Demonstration. The final project that you'll be working on for the introduction to PHP is an upgrade of your pizza parlor from your JavaScript course. This project will extend what you're already doing, adding database functionality to it. And as you can see, as you read through the specifications for this project, you're going to be demonstrating your ability to use the appropriate script, to use the document object model, to use properties, methods, and event handlers, to create and use scripting variables and data types, to use arithmetic comparison excuse me, and logical operators, create procedures and reusable functions, use the re request object to retrieve information from a web form, and create an interactive website using a database. In order to accomplish this, some of the things about the pizza parlor that you'll want to know is that you will have database connectivity. You will be basically working with customer information, pizza information, and administrator information. As you're working through this, if you find that you do not have the capability of creating a database, you will be given that. That is available to you. And you will be able to, if you didn't take the JavaScript course and are moving into this course because of previous knowledge, you will be given a bare bones raw frame working JavaScript website. You'll be creating pages that will give you a form that lists the pizzas in addition to what you are already have accomplished in the JavaScript class. You will be creating pages that will give you a form that lists the pizzas that have not been completed or if you're thinking about a pizza parlor type place, words, pizzas that had not been delivered. And in this form, you will be able to indicate that the pizza is now complete or has been delivered. A list of the completed pizzas throughout the history of the pizza parlor. A list of completed pizzas for a single day, the day that you're running the form. A form that gives you the ability to add new pizza parlor administrators, those that can check off that a pizza has been done. And the capability to make these administrators inactive. In addition to having all of this working in a, in a site, you will have to do some documentation. Your wireframe of how your pizza parlor will look, similar to what you had to do in either Web Development 1 or Web Development 141. A site specification document that specifies what you were requested to do. If you haven't seen that, you can see the CIS 141 site spe specification report an entity relationship diagram of your database. Again, if you have not taken any of the database theory and design classes or don't understand that, you can request that from your mentor. A user manual with directions of the features and how to use the administrative site. In this project, you'll be updating that final project from the introduction to JavaScript. So you're just simply adding some additional pages, some database connectivity to save the information. And what you'll be turning in is your completed functioning Pizza Parlor Deluxe Program and the documentation to your folder on bucket.sandbox.edcc within a folder that's called Pizza Parlor. And here on Canvas, you will be creating a screen capture of your Pizza Parlor front page to indicate to your instructor that you have completed this project. Now let's take a look at the project itself. As you can see, I'm looking at my WAMP server. And I'm going to go to Pizza Parlor Deluxe. And I'm going to start here by running the script that will create, actually deletes the old database if there's one there, and creates a new database. I've stored that in a folder called Database. And I've called it Create Database PHP. Again, if you don't have database capabilities, if you haven't had a theory and design class on databases, that can be provided to you by your instructor or mentor. By clicking on the Create Database PHP file, I'll run a series of SQL statements that will create a new database for us. As you can see, as I'm creating the database, I go through and I put in prompts or echoes out to the screen so that I can see that steps within the database in creating it have been completed correctly. The ones that are important here is that you notice that I have an existing database being dropped. I have the database being created. I'm telling SQL to use the Pizza Parlor Deluxe database. I have gone ahead and dropped a customer table if it was existing. 
created a new customer table. Same with an administrator's table, dropped and created. I did create a default administrator within this so that initially a person can log in and create other administrators. Pizza table, the record of any pizzas that have been ordered, has been dropped and created. And I created the foreign key. And finally, when this is all done, I put out the database was cr created correctly. So I'm going to go back now that I've created it. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to order a pizza. We're going to start out initially with creating a 20 inch deep dish Hawaiian pizza. And from your JavaScript class, you will see that I have an order summary that shows what I'm ordering. And it's dynamic as we're going along. And it changes the subtotal. So if we change it to veggie, no change in the price. But let's make it a hand tossed. And we'll see our price went down. Again, a deep dish. And I'm going to go with, oh, let's say bacon pepperoni and sausage and chicken. This is going to be a meat lovers. So I'm going to submit my order. And that takes me to the customer delivery information. I am going to use a name, Bill Friend. And his email address would be bfriend at yahoo.com. His address will be at the college, 2068th Avenue West. You can see if I tested that. City is Linwood, Washington, 98036. And phone number 425-111-1111. At this point, we see that the pizza price and description has been carried over. All of our fields are complete. You should still be doing checking to make sure that the required fields, as noted here, are completed. You learned that in the JavaScript class. And we're going to order the pizza. Again, a confirmation page that has a countdown of 29 minutes or less, confirms the delivery, what was being delivered, and the final price. In order to save some time within this recording, I went ahead and paused it and ordered two more pizzas that we'll be using in our demonstration. So at this point, we have our pizzas ordered. We've created our database. And now we need to look at the administrative side. So your database should have a default user built into it that can initially log in. And mine happens to be a default user by the name of default and a password a uh, capital S, lowercase o, m, e, t, h, one, n, g, and create the login. Now, when we create the login or do the login here, it's going to say, take us from the default and make us change that initially. A little bit of security here. So you'll see it asking me to remember the password. No. And it says, as the administrator, you need to change us right away. So I'm going to make this mini mouse is going to be our new default administrator and our username will be mini and I'm going to make the password capital W H A T E V E R 1 and W H A T E V E R 1 for whatever one and we're going to log in if we've been successful it will automatically take us to another back to the login page so we can log in so it did. Nope, I still don't want to remember that password. The username here is mini and capital W H A T E V E R 1 and login. And we are now going to see the administrative menu. On your administrative menu, you'll notice I have set up additional navigation. We can go back to the administrative menu anytime we want. We're going to be able to see our incomplete orders, our complete orders a daily summary, those that have been done today. We're going to be add a user and make a user inactive. So let's look at our incomplete orders. And here we should see three pizzas. Yay! So we have a pizza for Bill Friend, for Marty Baker, and for Mickey Mouse. Because our administrator of our pizza parlor is Minnie, she went ahead and set up Mickey's first. So I'm going to check his as being completed. 
and I'm going to use the form to mark the pizza as being complete and you notice it comes back refreshed immediately and his pizza is gone. So because it's me I'll go ahead and do one more time mark it as being complete and all we should see is bill friends and we do. So now we can look at a daily summary to see what pizzas have been completed today and you'll see that two pizzas have been delivered. Don't necessarily know the customer information or anything just the time and the total amount of sales. I'm going to go back to complete orders and you'll see again that right at the moment this shows just the same thing. If we had additional days we would have all of the pizzas there. I'm going to go back to our incomplete orders and finally fulfill bill friends and mark it as complete and now we have no outstanding pizzas. Again if we go to complete orders we'll see a total and the daily summary should only pull those for today. So the next part that you need to be able to do is you need to be able to add additional administrative users. So I'm going to go into this really quick and all we need in this is a new first name so we're going to use oh let's pick somebody good Russell so we're going to use Russell Wilson and let's use this login is Russell and Seahawks well I obviously can't do Seahawks So we're going to add the new user. And we will not see the password, you'll see a confirmation that we've got that done. So simply down the next we're going to show an inactive, creating an inactive user. You can see I've got two, Minnie and Russell. Russell, you should be taking time off, so I'm going to make you inactive. And we'll go back and we'll only see Minnie. So those are the things that you need to be able to do in your database, so go ahead and take a look. If you have any questions, your mentor or instructor will be able to answer those for you. So again, thank you.